It was in the fall of the year when I first saw Brother Branham. I was about 14 years old, and I lived in the little town of Dawson Creek in northern British Columbia. It's situated about 800 kilometers by gravel road from the nearest city, so quite remote. Brother Branham had been invited by some settlers in the area to come on a hunt. And I often wondered why he made such a long journey into such a remote area. He decided to, that he would have one service in the little church. At the end of the service, I made my way to the exit and stood behind the door. Brother Brownham began to move out of the sanctuary uh, in the midst of the crowd of people, and suddenly he stopped, turned, looked behind the door, and took my hand. I will never forget his words. He said, Little sister, if you will commit your way unto the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. I could only stand and weep. I, I had never heard of Brother Branham or his ministry, but I knew at that moment that I had had an encounter with a man of God. It was a supernatural meeting that would have a profound effect on my life. We had an opportunity to go to Jeffersonville and visit Brother Branham. The girls and I were riding in the back of his car. He was driving. Brother Ed was in the passenger's seat. The windows were wide open. It was hot. The wind was blowing. And, of course, our hair was blowing all over the place. Brother Branham said, Oh, let me put this window up. I don't want the lady's hair to be blown all over. And I thought that that was very kind. I appreciated that at the time. Uh, at that same visit, we were walking down the street with him, and he had uh, two of the girls uh, by each hand, and he began to ask their names and speak to each one individually. And he said to Joanne, who was five years old at the time, What is your name? And she said, I'm Joanne. He said, Oh, that's a good strong name. I believe you're going to be a singer. And surely she has been singing with her sisters ever since. I remember when we came to Jeffersonville on that trip, I did not know anything about the message, had not heard any message tapes. And I was dressed in such a way that was quite fashionable. I was wearing a imported Italian knit suit, high heels. My hair was piled up in a swirl. And I didn't even think of what Brother Branham might think of how I was dressed. He did not say anything about how I was dressed. He just simply said, Sister Bisco, how long is your hair? And I've always appreciated from that time that his kindness and understanding of a woman that had not learned how to dress like a Christian woman should. In July of 1962, Brother Biscoe invited Brother Branham to come to British Columbia for a series of meetings, first in Port Alberni, then in the capital city of Victoria, British Columbia. At about that time, my father, who lived in Dawson Creek, had a severe heart attack. He had an aortic aneurysm. The major vessel of his heart had ruptured. And the doctor had called me and said I should come up to Dawson Creek immediately. I was only able to stand by his bedside and not talk to him. And then I had to return to Victoria because of the upcoming meetings with Brother Branham. And I was playing the piano for the meetings and wanted to talk to him, ask him to pray. But I didn't have an opportunity. 
When the meetings were finished, uh, we were saying our goodbyes outside the motel in Victoria, and my husband and Brother Branham were talking together, and I was standing a few feet from them, just waiting. And suddenly Brother Branham turned to me and said, Oh, by the way, Sister Biscoe, your father will be all right. My father quickly recovered. He lived another 20 years, and he was all right from that point on, and he passed away just quickly at 85 years old.